Hey everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and here we are another today, again today with another sort of painty type thing. As you can see, we've got the, the dirty mat in front of us, so you know when you see this one, this is painty type things. And today I want to talk about um, metallics and natural metal finishes and stuff, and um, different paints that I've got. These aren't, I haven't got everything, but I just want to basically give you my general opinion. Before you start getting on the keyboard and writing loads of stuff and I'm doing this wrong and doing that wrong, please bear in mind I'm doing this sort of for the newer modellers out there, not for the more experienced modellers. So I know there are different ways of getting natural metal finishes and everything, um, but basically this is just going to be for basically newbies. And I have, to, I have to be honest, natural metal finishes to me are a fairly new thing as well. So I um, just want to basically start off by saying that. Now... There are many, many different ways, different finishes you can get, different paints and everything. Um, and I have found, for me, my favourite has been these. And these are the um, Tamiya lacquer paints. They're, they're denoted by the LP. If you get a normal um, Tamiya paint here, you've got XF or X. X is flat, X is normal. These are LP, they're lacquer paints. They're a lot more smelly than these. They need a different thinner. Um, they are very very good indeed and very very tough paints and their metallic range is it's quite extensive i've got some of them here this is a uh, light gun metal as you can see it's a quite a flecky paint that one we've got here we've got the flat aluminium which is just basically a dull aluminium which is great we've got here sparkling silver which you can see is very very flecky very pigmented we've got metallic gray as you can see it's quite dark it's more of like a gun metal sort of color uh, gloss aluminium which is my favorite which is absolutely awesome and here's a new one to me mica silver which I haven't used before I'm going to try all of these today through the airbrush I'm not going to be brush painting them and then we'll see how they come out and I'm going to show you some different effects and different ways of getting different finishes and stuff and going for your natural metal finishes we're also going to look at these we'll look at th this one in particular the aluminium there is a range here from the guns um, this is Mr. Metal Color and I've got here the aluminium and the brass uh, these work really, really well, and they're also buffable. So um, I'll show you the I'll show you this one in particular on the brush as well. I won't be spraying any of these because they're not very easy to spray. They tend to immediately dry on the tip, so you've constantly sort of getting this on off, on off, on off, and they're not great for spraying. I find uh, unless you thin them right back, and then you kind of lose their benefit. Uh, there's also these here which I'm not going to use today. I've done a video on these before. I don't like them, I can't get on with them, um, particularly the Viejo one. I've thrown away the one I did have, the aluminium. Uh, it would never dry. Uh, I've got a wing here somewhere, I can't think where it is. I thought it was to hand, but um, in fact it is. I think it's in a drawer down here. I'm sure it's in a drawer down here. What have I done with it? Um, but basically, yeah, here it is. And I did this probably two years ago. Uh, and you can see these are the paints and that... You can hear it is still not dry. I could still put finger marks in it and it's been there for like two years and you can see there, if we take a fresh bit here you can see there's no finger mark here along that trailing edge. If I squeeze that with my thumb, bear in mind this has been there two years, you can see now, there's, I don't know if you can, there's a finger mark in it, I can see it. It's, you can hear it's not dry. Okay, that one's the same. So, yeah, not happy with those at all. And you can see on my thumb, you can see the metallic has been rubbing off. So, absolute, yeah, I won't use the word, but um, I'm not going to use them because I don't like them at all. And also, this one here, I believe, is enamel base, so you need to be careful with your enamel washes and stuff. Um, my all time favourites in metal colours are these, these are the Alclads. Uh, you can see we've got quite a few of them here. Uh, I'm going to show you an effect with one of these. I'll just use the chrome. Because as far as I'm concerned, for the chrome, which is this one here, there is no better chrome paint than this one. And I will prove that to you in a second. So we'll start off. We're going to look at all the LP paints. I want to start off with this one. Now, in a lot of my videos, people say, always end up saying, what about for those of us that brush paint? And I think for, the, for your brush painting, I think these could well be the best. I must be honest, I've never tried brush painting with these, but I do know that these work extremely well. Okay, so basically, we'll give this one a good stir. And you can see they get quite pigmented. You can see there's, there's a lot of lumps in there. 
<clears throat> so you need to make sure you have really, really stirred it well. Okay, so that's that one stirred. And I've got here quite a thin, quite a small, stubbly brush. Okay, so we're just going to wet the brush. And then I'm going to show you on this good old B52 wing that we're back with. So I'm going to show you on here, you can just brush this out. And even with this little thin, you know, th this small stubbly brush, you can still get a half decent finish. Okay, so you just leave that like that. I'm just going to leave that there to dry and you can see it's quite a nice metallic finish on there. So I'll leave that to dry for a few minutes. But I want to show you another technique that I learnt by accident. If you want to paint stuff like this, you can airbrush it and it, it'll look good. But if you brush paint it, you tend to get pooling. And to avoid that, you really want to dry brush it. Now this stuff I'm going to show you is absolutely amazing for dry brushing. I'm going to take all this paint off the brush, or pretty much all of it, okay? And if you look at here, we've got the grey plastic on there. These are actually Airfix Hellcat ammo belts. And I can dry brush this. No primers, just straight onto the plastic. Make sure we get into all the angles. Make sure we get it all in there. Okay, and I'm going to pick up some more paint off the cloth. And as you can see, you can dry brush this and it looks amazing. And you can just keep going over it again and again and again and not worry about brush marks or build up of paint or anything. And I think you'll agree once I've done that, you would think you could not be scorned for thinking that is, you know like when you get those Tamiya car kits and they've got those silver plated parts in them, that's how it looks isn't it? And it dries in no time at all. Now this here should be, yeah that's pretty dry, okay so I can come along here with a cotton bud I can buff this up and as you can see it's removing the brush marks. Okay, it's probably not actually dry enough, but I can remove those brush marks. Just like so. And I can also give it a sheen, a metallic sheen. And if I leave it to dry a bit longer, which we will do, I can come back and polish it again and you might even see a reflection of the camera in it. But you can see now we've got no brush marks at all. All right, so that's one of the big benefits with this paint. And that is the Mr. Color. <laughs> that is the Mr. Color. Uh, and this one is actually number 218. So that's Mr. Color, Mr. Metal Color 218 aluminium. It is absolutely brilliant. They do like a stainless steel, they do an iron. Uh, there's here you can see the brass one and they're all the same they're all absolutely brilliant and they're fantastic for brush painting as you can see there and even here if I get all the paint off the brush you can see there's nothing left on there Rub it on the cloth there's hardly anything on there at all I can come along there and you can see the powder coming out and that is one of the problems it's very pigmented but even when it's that dry I can still brush that on there and get a metallic finish to that part as you can see okay really really nice with this one here I'll use the cleaner of the cotton but I should be able to polish this up get a nice finish on it as I said I would recommend leaving it for about an hour before you polish it but you can see on there you've now got that you can imagine putting a wash on there ping it's going to really pop and look beautiful so um you don't need to be the best airbrusher in the world, or if you don't want to clog your airbrush up with metallic paints, which is always a bit of a pain, then that's one option you can do, especially for your detail parts. Right, so let's move along now to the <clears throat> Tamiya. Okay, so start by saying I've got the window open, I've got a fan here to my left, uh, which is blowing across me and blowing any fumes out the window, so I'm not really too worried about not wearing a mask and stuff. We can see here what this metallic paint does, and it is awful stuff. If you get it anywhere, it just spreads like wildfire. You get it on your finger, it just spreads. You can see it's going to ruin your mats and stuff. So 
just make sure you're prepared to basically ruin everything that's within half a mile of you when you're doing this. So um, let's start looking at these Tamiya paints. Now the, my favourite of all of them is this one here, the gloss aluminium. This one here is sparkling silver, no sorry, this one here, sparkling silver, is I think the brightest one. Now I've been through and stirred all these, so now a good shake is going to be enough to get them going. I'm going to use Mr. Colour Wrapper Thinner for this, purely because it makes it dry fast. Um, but also I'm led to believe that it actually makes them more um, luster. It makes them more full of luster because the, the metallic particles just dry on the surface and don't get a, a chance to sink. That's what I'm told. Um, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But basically, I'm going to put a drop of drop of the rapid thinners in the airbrush. <clears throat> Just blow it back through. It's really annoying. Every time I start talking, I get a frog in my throat. Um, there we go. So we'll blow that through. So now we know the airbrush is good to go. So we'll just get a drop of the rapid thinners. And I'm going to thin this roughly 50-50. Okay, so that's that there, and then I should use a brush to get some of this paint and deposit it into my airbrush. And I'll mix in the cut, which I know a lot of you are going to, oh, you can't do that. Well, I can, I've been doing it for years. So there we go, mix that in there, another drop in there. Okay, this stuff dries so fast, it doesn't really matter how thin you get it. If you saw my test with the Modeler's World. Um, acrylic doctor that paint thinners I used you will see in there that it was um it was fairly critical the actual uh, mixing with these with these sort of lacquer paints it's not so critical you can over thin it it's better to over thin it than under thin it actually so let's have a look at what sort of finish we get with this so we'll see and the, and the secret is to put it down lightly don't go banging in heavy put it in heavy if you try to spray heavy you'll get this kind of flooding effect and you can see in there you've got all those horrible stains whereas if you go light you will get this very light build up now you, what you can see in here are marks in the plastic and I've done this on purpose you can see here if I catch it in the light well you, you can actually because of the colour of the plastic there are tooling marks obviously this is the inner surface of the wing so the finish wasn't critical but you can see now how the actual silver paint, the metallic paint has highlighted it. So basically this is what I'm saying, if you're going for a natural metal finish on your model aircraft or any sort of aluminium finish or something, then you need to make sure that what's underneath the paint is very smooth and very good. Now with these lacquer paints they stick so well I would recommend not priming. If you're doing something like a Tamiya kit where the surface finish on the outside is going to be lovely, this one's not so good. This is the AMT B52 which is frankly junk um, but basically uh, if you've got a nice plastic finish don't prime it or anything just just leave it and make sure it's nice and clean and spray straight on the plastic that way you run no risk of any problems where you've got seam lines down fuselages and wing roots and stuff you're just gonna have to be really really careful rub it back polish it make sure it's really really good because as you can see here any sanding marks or anything are going to stick out like a sore thumb the other thing you can see here is how quick this dries so um that's really really good. Now let's try it on the on this plastic where we've got the a better a better finish. In fact, let's do it on on do, 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 do. let's do it on this stuff. Do it on this one. Okay, so we're just going to lay some down on here, nice and fine, almost putting it down dry. There we go. Lay it down like so, and just let it build up until you get that natural metal sort of look to it and as you can see we've got this sparkling bright silver color which is not really very realistic so I'm going to start a jar here of paint the black you can see is actually where I've used it up turned there's nothing to okay we got some in there so what I'm going to do is any dregs of paint I'm going to put in there will end up with a metallic mess if you like but that there is down and that is pretty much dry there you go I can't put a finger mark in it so why would you use this when you can use this 
okay, when after two years it's still not gone off and this has gone off in less than two minutes. So this is what I was saying the other day about special paints. People say, oh, use this, try this, try this. Why would you try something that causes you issues when there's something readily available that doesn't? I don't get it, which is why I don't use AK, never will again use AK in the Viejo type bottle. And I will never use um, Ammo MIG. They're, they're a nightmare to use, so why use them? When you can use Tammy and have no problems. So there we go, so that's the sparkling silver. Now I'm going to have a go, this is my favourite, this is the LP70, the gloss aluminium. Again, we'll give it a shake. Okay, we'll put a couple of drops of the, <clears throat> of the rapid thinners in here. Just a couple of drops. I'm not worried about mixing it, because what's the, the little tiny bit that's left in there is nothing. Okay, so we'll just put one, two, yeah, that'll do us. That's a nice mix in there. I'll put it on the side of the airbrush cup. You can see that it's very, very thin. You can see through it, so I'm happy with that. So we'll put the top back on there. Put the top back on there. And then we'll just blow back through to make sure that the needle isn't surrounded by thinners. And then I'm going to spray this down here. And you should see the difference straight away. And I think this is a far more realistic as you can see, put it down very, very lightly, not building it up at all. And then we can just go over like that to get rid of any stripiness. And you can see that you've got straight away, you've got a very, very different shade. Now I can still see the plastic through there, so it needs some more. So we'll just lay some more down. And we can go in circles. We just want to cover up the, the plastic. Okay, so there we go. So you can see there the difference in the two. One is a lot less sparkly. Now this is where you can start to use post-it notes to get an effect. So if you've painted the wing in this silver colour and you're sort of, you want to make it look a bit more or less toy-like, because aircraft, when you look at aircraft, they've got all different colour panels. I use post-it notes. So you come along, get your post-it notes. Just get two off here, so we can say that panel there. And if I do miss the lines, I'm sorry. It's I'm doing this for speed rather than accuracy. I can just lay that down on there, and you can see. Okay, that what I've done now is just masked off that one area, so I can come along now and I can spray very lightly over that spray. I'm not, I'm not trying to cover it. I still want to see through it. But what we've got now, you can see, you've got a difference in the tonality of the panel and I can come along to the next one just like so mask that side of that one up again and then very lightly just get a little test very lightly go over the two and I doubt you'll see it but there is a you've now got three different colors you've got that color that color and that color they're all different Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Then we could come along with a different colour and do it all again. All right, so now I've got the RP61. This is the called metallic grey. Um, there's still a little bit of silver left in the paintbrush from where I haven't, the airbrush where I haven't washed it out. You can see once again, this stuff is going to go down beautifully. Again, building it up slowly, spraying it lightly. There we go. You've got a lovely finish in there. It's a matte finish, but it's a very, very nice finish indeed. So there, what we can do now is we can come along and mask off that silver we've just sprayed. In fact, no, we'll do the next one. And as you notice, this this um, paper isn't affecting the isn't affecting the paint at all because it's it's hard wearing. Some you'll find that some of the metallic paints, if you try and stick anything on them while they're too soft they will actually um, mark. So again here just test, I'm going to spray very very lightly over this. Okay, and that should have just given it a, no I've sprayed it too lightly so you can't even see it. So I'll mask it off again. Just a little tester. Yeah, 
just to give it a bit of a tone change and then we can see on there it's again we've now got a different color okay so that is actually appearing lighter to you which is very strange that panel there is the one I've just sprayed with metallic grey and to my eye that is darker but to the camera it's lighter and it's because of the reflectivity of the silver against the dull so again you can get some really interesting finishes and as you can see looking across this panel like this you've now got these different tones which is what you're after on your on your bare metal finish aircraft so that's what you're looking for okay but again I don't know if you can polish this stuff let's get a cotton bud It does polish to a certain extent. It's coming up to like a semi-gloss, but it's not actually coming up like this stuff does. When you polish this, you can get proper, proper reflectivity. As I say, if I this is the old Mr. Colour, and if I keep polishing this, we should end up with a finish that you may even be able to see a reflection of the camera in. Not quite. But uh, the, the lighting is too, too bright behind it, I think. But basically, I, mean, I can polish it with my finger as well. And you can see it's, uh, it's beautiful, extremely shiny, very nice finish. So there we go. So that's, that's the, the darker grey. Okay. So we'll put this back into our pot. And then I'm going to show you another effect. Spray that into there. As you can see, we're getting a bit of a mess going in there now, which is nice. Okay, so I'm just going to give my airbrush a quick clean. Because I want this to come out nice for you. Right, so as you can see here, I've used post-it notes and different colours of paint. You see the reflection of my hand in there, you can see it's quite reflective. I've used the different colours of paint to basically get the variation in shades all over the model. And you can use this, you can basically mix paints, you can thin them heavily, have them a bit thicker, and get every single panel on the model a different colour if you want to, and get it looking really interesting rather than just having a, a silver painted wing. Another way of doing it is to pre-shade. Now you can see here what I've got is, I can't remember what these colours are, this is X1 Gloss Black. This is a semi-gloss black been mottled on. And obviously this is a dark grey, like an XF63 grey. And I think this is something like RLM02. I can't remember what colours I use now. But basically these are all flat, except for this one which is semi-gloss and this one which is gloss. And as you can see, it's been sprayed on and it's not very glossy because it's gone back. Okay, because it's only had one coat. If I put another coat over there, it would come out a lot glossier. I just want to show you the kind of effect you can get by pre-shading. So, now here I've got the LP70, which is the gloss aluminium, which is my favourite of all of them. And I can basically lay this down, just do a little test, yeah. I can lay this down over these different colours and you will see the different finish we will get. I'll just leave the edge so you can see the colours sticking through. You can see here, they're laying this down thin on top of these. There we go. And you can see straight away the massively different finish and different colour you get. Now if you look at the colour of that there compared to that one there, compared to that one there. <clears throat> and also, I, you can't see it on camera, but the finish on here, the finish is a lot more speckly and dry than this one here. This is a lot smoother. Okay, so you can see there with pre-shading you can get that amazing different finish on your model. So obviously I need to put more paint down on there to do it. So let's see what the sparkling silver looks like if we put it over that on top. Okay, and we could just do it randomly in certain areas. <clears throat> Remember, this is all trying to just add interest and get some tonal variation going on rather than just having a a silver blob you know if you're doing something like a great big 70 second scale b36 or something or a b52 you want different colors you don't want just one lump of silver plate on the on the on the display bench to you so get the sparkling silver what i can do here now is 
cover that there and I think what we'll do is cover that there okay do a little test there we go we can just run that over there like so okay and then what we can do is come back to here come back to there very lightly like that okay and then come back to here and even more lightly like so and you can see now we can do that kind of thing and just spray up to the edge you can see that you can end up and half the panel in a certain colour. So you see all the different shades on there. When you look at it straight, like this, you can see it's all silver. When you change the angles, when you start looking across it, you can see all the different tones and everything coming through. You look at the difference there and there, just with that quick spray of that silver paint. It's quite amazing. So, and it's very difficult to show on camera because the camera is kind of reversing the reflectivity of things but there you go you can see there and if we, we can do something here as well we can put that there okay and we can put that one there and then we can put another one oh come here another one there like that and just lightly spray in there you can see you can see the kind of effects you can get it works really really well you can get all these different colors so there we go okay so something else I just want to quickly show you now is the is the Alclats I've got a few different colors here but I'm going to use the chrome just to demonstrate and I think this is probably the best chrome paint on the market. Um, it's hard wearing, you can put decals, decals straight onto it. You can actually clear coat it and not lose its sheen and I'm going to show you that. And Because um, many people talk about not being able to clear coat metallic colours, you lose their metallic look, they just become silver paint. And I found that if you use aqua gloss then it doesn't do that. So I've got the here, you can see here there's a ball bearing in the bottle, it comes with it, you can shake it up and basically you can see when it's all mixed properly and it's great for dispensing because you can just literally just come along and just pour a bit in the airbrush like so job done okay and then we'll just get a cloth and wipe down aside the airbrush because unfortunately the edges of the bottles aren't sharp enough to have it pouring nicely in fact i'm going to need some more so i'm just going to pour some more in here wipe down the side of the airbrush because as I say unfortunately the edges of the bottles aren't sharp enough if you're watching Alclad please improve your bottles if the bottles were sharper on the edge it would run out rather than run down the neck so this is the Alclad chrome I'm just going to blow this back through just do a little test patch this stuff is very very smelly it smells like cellulose now with the chrome if you really want to get the effect you really want to get the finish what you need to do is get a nice high sheen gloss black. This is pretty shiny. It's not ultra shiny, but it's very pretty shiny. And this is the Mr. Color GX2, which is, I think, the best gloss black, black paint on the market. You could probably use the actual LP... LP5? That's semi-gloss. LP3 is flat black. I don't actually have a gloss black in the LP. I'm not sure which number it is, but um, it's going to be down in the low numbers, but there'll be an LP colour. But um, this, I think, is probably the best gloss black there is. But as I say, it's going to be in line with the, the LP. So if you've got a nice gloss finish, okay, just clean it off, make sure there's no dust or anything on there. You can take this whole clad chrome and you need to spray it very, very lightly. And what you will get, just blow that off, what you will get is a chrome finish like you won't believe, okay? I'm going to show you now. Watch this.
as you can see, very, very lightly. I'm going to let it build up. Again, already you can see, we're starting to get this chrome finish on there. I'm just going to let it build up. What will happen is you'll see less and less of the black coming through. And as you can see now, we're getting this very shiny colour. Okay, and we're starting to get that chrome look to it, as you can see there. It's just one more thin layer. As you can see there, if I hold the airbrush over it, you can see the reflection of my hand and the airbrush. And it is very much like chrome. And that, I think, is the best. I think that's the best chrome paint on the market. Now I'm going to try put another one. I may go a bit too far. If you put too much paint on, you will lose the chrome effect. And that is one of the problems with doing this. Okay, we're there. It's still working. You can see in there the reflection of my airbrush and my hand. Come up here, you might get a reflection of the camera, but I think the light behind it is too bright. You can see the light behind it, but I don't, you can't see the camera. There we go. No, we can't get a reflection of the camera. <laughs> I'm just going to see if I can show you what happens if you go too far. It's still good by the look of it. It's just getting better and better. You can see the reflectivity is still good. As I say, as far as I'm concerned, this is the best chrome paint on the market. And I'm just going to show you one more other thing as well. While I've got the paint in there. With the Alclads, if you've got some Alclads, you've got the LPs, you can once again come along and do your, do your tone changes. Okay, so we've got some of that chrome in there. So I can just lightly paint this over here. bit of a different finish on there and then we can come along to here mask that one off mask that one off as you can see you can just really really play with things and get your tones all over the place let's um, do one over here look just mask that off like that and then just, just lightly spray that on. Just get a very, very slight, you see it's a really slight total change to everything. Okay, all right, so I just want to quickly show you what the Alclad brass is like, because I think, again, this is the best brass on the market. Um, just spray it straight onto the plastic over here. You can see that if you build it up slowly, you'll get a lovely, brass looking finish just like so we've got the lovely brass colour which would be great for your screws and stuff on your um, on your ships but if I spray some over this chrome See that we've got a, a slight reflectivity in it. I should be able to rub it with my finger and improve that reflectivity. Okay, 
I wish what I'd done is left half the gloss black <laughs> so you could see the um if I've got any gloss paint in anywhere down here. No. But I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll try it over this gloss, this is a sort of glossy sheen on this red. No, it's not getting the right effect. But um, basically, you can see if you put this down over the gloss black, again, you get that beautiful sheen. And basically what it is, it's the gloss black is showing back through the actual paint. So here we've got too much paint, too much of the black and the silver. So what is well, the gold and the silver, sorry, the brass and the silver, should I say. So we're losing the, the black coming through. But you can see that, you know, you can get the reflectivity off it. It's not as good as the as the chrome. You can see if I put the airbrush there, you can see the reflection. If I move over there, it's not so good. But um, yeah, really, really cool. So that's the Alclads. Just show you something else so quickly, guys. If you want to get like a sort of burnt or a titanium sort of finish to your metals, the brass over the silver, very, very lightly, as you can see there. You can see you've got this tone change in the steel. So if I put that back on there, put that back on there and then go over, you can see you've got that in there. So this will darken. So you can see there we've got the tone change here coming down. You can see it there. Okay, and then this one's darker, the same effect. I've done the same over here. Okay, the other thing you can do then is just go over the whole lot. And what it'll do is darken what's already there and slightly change the colour of the other. So if this is going to be like the, the metal panelling around the back of your Su-27 or something, you can see that you, you can just play with this to your heart's intent. And because it's so thin, and you're putting it down so thin, you're not going to lose any detail. So you can just keep on practicing and, and not sort of, you know, not lose anything. And if you want to give everything a total sort of tinge, see there, that's given the whole lot of tinge. Okay. So sky's the limit. You can really, really play with this to your heart's content, guys. So there we go, that's my video about metallic finishes. Oh, one thing I've got to show you is the clear. I want to show you how the clear looks over the chrome. Okay, so what I want to talk about now is clears. Now, as Fox was saying only last weekend in one of his videos, you know, and I, I agree with him, he's 100% right, I'm not criticising what he's saying at all. You put clears down over metallic finishes and they just become a shiny silver. Um, you lose that metallic look. You can see this has got like a metallic look to it, particularly around here. Um, and if you put a gloss on it, you just lose that metallic look. And what I found when I did my Revell Saturn V build, if you use the Alclad Aqua Gloss over the Alclad Chrome, you don't lose the metallic finish. Now we can all agree, and you can see the reflection of my finger in there, that looks like chrome, yeah? Okay. Now if I spray this Aqua Gloss over the top of it, I'm going to eat my words here. I don't think it loses the effect. So I'm going to spray this on. Just lay it down. Okay, and then just let that... One more quick run over it. And that will pull down and that will settle out. But you can see, we've still got the reflection of my finger in there. It still looks like chrome. It doesn't look like a shiny silver paint. And even on the brass, we've probably improved the brass, if anything. You can see the reflection of my finger when I move into the brass. So I'll just leave that to sit just for a minute. I'm going to give it one more coat so that it's got something to wet on wet. go so you can see it's still shiny okay it doesn't look like glossy silver paint and we've still got the reflection of my finger in there it still looks like chrome 
So we'll let that settle down for a second. And I'm going to see if it works over the over the um, LP paints. So we'll spray this down on here. Okay, so that's quite heavy on there. You can see it's quite shiny. I've put a lot on there. We'll do the same here. I'm, just, I'm leaving the trailing edge. Okay, and I can see what's happening here. It's really, really highlighting. If you remember, I put the very light brass on there. You can see it's really made the brass pop. It's sort of brought everything to the foot, to the surface. But it does actually look like silver paint with a gloss coat on it. So yeah, Fox was right in that respect. Let's see what this gunmetal looks like. Was it gunmetal? I think it was, wasn't it? Was it gunmetal? No, oh, like, like metallic grey, that was that one. Metallic grey, which is a flat colour. Let's see how that looks with the gloss on it. That's very nice. That'd be really nice for a model car, for model car engine parts and stuff. So as you can see, it's kind of got that silvery look to it. And then if we go over, this is the um, Mr. Colour. And you can see when I spray gloss coat on that, it completely loses its metallic look 100%. So, you know, it's... um. It's, you take your choice, you see what you think. But that one there is starting to level out now, and as you can see, we've still got the reflection of my finger in there, got the reflection of the finger in there. That is still definitely, still definitely looks like chrome to me. So there we go, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, any questions, pop them down below. Um, and as I say, if you are an advanced model and you know of different ways to get metallic finishes, oh, and if you've had these work for you wonderfully, then great. They don't work for me, and I've proved it on camera, and I've proved it here two years later. So, right now, if you thought that the last segment you saw of this video was coming to an end, you were right. And then I remembered, I didn't show you what I said I would do. I said I would show you all these colours and see how they look. So this is um, later on now in the night. In fact, it's actually I'll show you what time it is. It's actually this time. It's time for this. And I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, Budweiser. I'd love it. I love Budweiser. Um, anyway, so yeah, what I've done, I've taken one of these B-52 wings and I've sprayed it with all the different colours. And you can see them all there. And unfortunately, the camera and the light makes everything sort of change colour. You can see, if I do that, they look a completely different colour to if I do that. So you can see all the shades there. So I'm going to keep this because it's going to be a good reference for all you car modelers and motorcycle modelers and stuff. When you're doing your engines and gearboxes, it's always good to know what these colours come out like. The other thing I've done, if you look across the top here, you can see it's got a sheen to it across this area here. I've put some LP9 over there. So we should be able to see um, if it affects the metallic. And if anything, this number 20, I think it is, is no, which one's sparkling silver? Sparkling silver is 48, which is this one. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but it kind of... You know what I was saying before about putting a clear on sort of makes things look like painted silver? This kind of makes it look more metallic. You can get it in the light. You can see there, you can see the flake in the paint through the clear, whereas in the un unblackered part, you can't. So, quite interesting. So, um... This took a while, I believe, believe me. Clean that the airbrush, what's that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times. Ugh, drove me crazy. But anyway, so these are all the colours. So 19, LP, oh, the other thing I want to say, some of them have a black label. You can see LP40, around the LP40 bit is white, and this one is black. And according to Tamiya, this means it's a metallic. The only difference I've noticed is these don't seem to sludge up in the bottom like these do. You know when you had a paint stand around for a while, you get the sort of thick sediment in the bottom. These don't seem to do that. So I've had them all the same sort of time. I got them all from Edit Premium Hobbies. Um, so yeah, these are called metallics and these aren't. And yet, that is metallic black. 
as you can see, and yet it's not in their metallic range. And it looks pretty bloody metallic to me, I think you'd agree. Yeah, so anyway, um, so basically from left to right, LP19, that's gun metal. LP20 is light gun metal. Now, if anything, that looks darker when it's down, but this one's also got a sheen and that one hasn't. So again, it's, it's nice to have these different shades. Um, LP38 is flat aluminium or flat aluminium should say because that's how it's written on there and that is the correct way to say it. Um, LP40 is metallic black which is this one here. Then we've got sparkling silver which is the really really bright one there. LP61 is metallic grey which is the dull flat looking grey which would be great for a sort of um, break bells and stuff or if you want to do that kind of um, that anodized grey colour that you sometimes see on cars. Uh, titanium gold, this one here, 62. Really good for your sort of um, brake calipers on race cars and stuff. Um, and then we've got titanium silver. Again, another great colour for the brake calipers and stuff on cars. Also good for the um, the fittings. If you're doing, if you're using like Goodridge fittings, you have the metallic red and the metallic blue fittings. But sometimes they just use um, the 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 sort of plated fittings and that's great that color there is great for them uh, then we've got LP70 which is my favorite which is the sparkle uh, sorry the gloss aluminium or gloss aluminum should I say champagne gold which is a lovely pale gold color really nice color for a sort of modern car and then finally we've got the mica silver or mica silver I'm not sure how you pronounce it that's on the end there now when I actually look at these two I can't really see a lot of difference uh, if anything this one's got a finer pigment in it um, but when we've got the gloss over them, they look exactly the same. And if you ask me, they look exactly the same without the gloss. And as you can see, as I say, with the gloss on there, it makes quite a difference to the tone. You can see everything kind of darkens up and becomes more in your face, if you like. Maybe these don't. Maybe that one doesn't. Certainly this one becomes a lot more silver. You can see between the 63, where it's clear coated and where it isn't, you can see it's a lot, lot different in colour. Sorry about my dirty nails guys, I've been out in the garage. But, um, so there we go. Now this has only been down for about an hour, so I'm not sure, but remember we said about this mark fit, if it would affect lacquer paints. Let's just try it on this bit here. Yes, it's affected it. So probably because it's only been down about an hour. I'll try it again tomorrow and then I'll, I'll mention it in another video. But um, people were asking if Mark Fit would be actually okay against lacquer paints and the Tamiya lacquer paints. And it looks like it's not. But then, as I say, it's only been down for about an hour. So that's not a really fair test. So there we go. That's all the different colours, guys, that I've got. I think there are more. And you've got to keep looking because um, I've just looked on Hero Boy. And Hero Boy's website only goes up to 60, and I've got up to 77, so I think they just keep adding and adding and adding and adding. Um, I did look again, the reason I went to Hero Boy is because he's got a great description of all the stuff on there, all the, the features about it. And um, apparently it's very, very good for going straight to plastic, so you don't need to use primers. The other thing I'm very impressed with is the clear. That is really, really glossy, um, and it's only had like two quick coats. And that was thinned with the Mr. Colour Rapid Thinner, so it would probably be even better with Leveling Thinner, because it would take longer to settle out. The other thing I wanted to show you was this after it's dry. This as I sprayed this morning. And as you can see, it's still got that lovely chrome look to it. You can see the reflection. I'll well, grab an airbrush. Here's the Bart Sharp airbrush. So you can see the reflection in there of the airbrush. You can see it's very chrome-like. Um, and it's very, very nice indeed. Now, I think if I'd put slightly less paint on, it would be even more chrome-like. Or had the black been a lot more shiny. But if I do a car kit or anything in the future, I'll show you how good it can look. But as I say, if you really want to see how good it looks, go back to my Revell 144 scale Saturn V build. I did the command module with it, the gloss black and the, um, and the, uh, uh, the Alclad chrome. And then give it a clear coat and it came out really, really nice. So um, just another quick thing I wanted to mention, where I painted this one with the aqua gloss, it's kind of disappeared. If you remember, I put a band of aqua gloss across here, it's kind of disappeared. But when I'm looking at this now, look at the effects you can get with a couple of different colours. So this is the the black, the dark grey, the slightly lighter grey. I think this is like um, 
XF66, and um, this is X66, so this is like XF24, and then I'm not sure, I should have written on the back what they were, I've forgotten. Um, but basically, and, and you can see that's the mottled effect there underneath. But look at the different hues and stuff you can get with a few different colours. And remember, this is only a couple of the silvers and then some of the gold sprayed out. That's, in fact, that's just the alclad brass, isn't it, there? That's giving that, um, that gold sort of tinge to it. But you can see that you, you know, the effect you can get if you want to really go to town and play with this stuff. And um, you can have some fun just playing, get, grab a scrap wing or something and mask off some different areas. Remember we did the different colour panels on here as well. You can see those there, the different shades and the different tones. It's not really showing up. In fact, the gloss coat has kind of got rid of the effect a bit. But um, you can see on there, it, it's great. So if you are doing a, a natural metal finish model, then you're not just going to have it, as I said earlier, it's not just going to be a silver blob. So... Um, Anyway, there we go. So really impressed with that, how it's come out. Really loving these colours. Loving that effect there, but I knew it was going to be that good. It's just it's just bloody awesome. Really, really good. Not sure if you can see a reflection of the camera yet. You can see a reflection of the light. But um if I dim the light a bit. No, you can't see the camera at all. There's actually a red light on the front of the camera as well. I thought you'd be able to see that. But, uh... No. Anyway, there we go. So, thanks for watching, guys. Spin the light back. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you've enjoyed that. As I say, any questions, pop them in the comments down below. Um, and like I say, keep looking at the Tamiya range because they're always about. These are available from Ed over at Premium Hobbies. Don't forget, use the discount code NMB10. And you'll get 10% off. They're $1.99, so you can get them for like one. It's going to be $1.79 or $1.80, isn't it, for the um, per pot? So it's very good value actually for what they are because they really, really are very, very good paints. So um, I need to get myself some more. I've almost got all of them. I'm not sure how, exactly how many I have got, but um, I need to get some more. I want to get the LP1 gloss black and try it with the Alcloud as well. So when we do that, oh, the other thing is, remember we did this one here. Um, this is like seven or eight hours later now, and we can see that we can still polish it, and it comes up nice and shiny. Okay, so remember that was what I did with the dry brushing. So there we go, guys. Hope you got something from that, and I'll see you all soon. As I say, I need to get back on with the Lancaster, don't I? Bye for now.